um, <coughs> unless anyone has any, like, you know, fun facts they'd like to share about their day. I would say uh, my fun fact is I was in a turkey costume about two hours ago running around. So I like it. But yeah. uh, was this for, like, work or pleasure? Like, what, what was that? <laughs> It, it was for work. Okay. Uh, so I'll have a special Thanksgiving post on social media for work in uh, I dig it. a couple days. So yeah, that was that was my fun excitement today. Nice. Uh, my fun thing today is that I'm now getting cyber bullied by Trump supporters. Whoa. Oh, I feel like that because requires I, a backstory. <laughs> I posted a video of myself prank calling the voter fraud hotline and telling them that I saw two pretty best friends at the polls. And I posted it on YouTube, and I got a couple people... Oh, like, I got one person saying that it was funny in my comments, and then, like, I think, what, like, 100, 100 views? Very minimal. But then I got a bunch of people telling me that they sent the video to the FBI, and that, like, I'm gonna... I'm, like, gonna be charged with treason for interfering with a fraud investigation, and I've just been responding to every single one of them with heart emojis. Oh my, so they get so mad halfway through this podcast we're just gonna see and hear bridget be dragged away by the fbi <laughs> they're gonna yeah. bust down your door anyway um yeah i don't have a fun fact i was in my room all day working from home the chaotic green walls did not bring like a calm mood to me and nor did my work so yeah <laughs> all right well with our with our fun facts and anecdotes out of the way for today, I say let's officially start episode nine whatever <laughs> of the Fighting with Friends podcast. And with us we have Nate Lull, who's just gonna who's here to just bring some some fun chaos, let's hope. Yeah, you yeah. wanna intru- introduce yourself? <laughs> sure, yeah. Um as Bridget said, my name is Nate Lull. We actually met because I was her one of her professors in in college. So I don't know how many podcasts can say they've been able to to interview their uh, their professor, I guess. But um, we got one. Yeah, you do. We got Brooks. Oh, perfect. So you're the second. <laughs> perfect. But I have to say, like, you know, when you teach online, sometimes it's hard to necessarily like make that long term connection. But I mean, kudos to Bridget for just always throwing out a a good text or a good email to kind of make my day so it's been a super good connection to have love to love to hear it's just because i have no boundaries and when someone says here's my phone number if you have any questions (laughs) that's almost always going to be followed up by meme (laughs) well it's funny because like in all the classes i've taught you know i've maybe had five people text me and it's all very like hey when is this assignment due or i lost this or whatever my dog ate my homework, but yeah, you just were like, "Hey, here's my snake. Here's a cool." Well, because I hate <laughs> emails. Yeah, <laughs> so it worked. I, I mean, I, as I say to all my classes, like I'm here to help. Like literally, if it's the middle of the night, just text me. Like that's the quickest way I'll get back to you. So feel we free, and you did. See it. Yeah, and you have did. You, have you gotten any? My dog ate my homework. Now that we switched to online learning, like what is that? Your laptop. <laughs> Yeah, like, I haven't gotten too many creative excuses. Like, for whatever reason, people just seem to be like, I completely forgot, didn't do it, sorry, like, can I still get an extension? And sometimes I want to be like, really? This is probably the easiest class you're ever going to take, and you can't just do this for me? Come on. But <laughs> At least come up with a creative excuse. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, my, see, sometimes my I la- kind of respect the honesty. Like, I love that there's some some person who like teaches at a college and they posted it on Twitter was like, I received an email from a student who failed their midterm. And it's a screenshot of the email. It just says like, dear professor, whatever, bruh, respectfully. (laughs) And then the person's (laughs) name, I was like, okay. No, I I I gotta respect that. I like the creative ones. Like my laptop is on fire sent from my iPhone. (laughs) Like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I, I would love to get a creative one. I just haven't. I'd say the wackiest thing I've gotten is like, literally, I've had a couple of students just drop off the face of the earth uh, from the beginning of the class to the end. They don't even take the final, and then they get whatever grade they get at that point. And I always try to 
send the send out the Hail Mary to them like please if you do this I can at least get you a C okay. mm-hmm. they don't do that and then there's been at least twice where I've been like hey like I failed and I really think I deserved a passing grade and it's like I haven't talked to you in four months <laughs> like, give me something I, here. <laughs> I failed oh by the way my name is <laughs> yeah yeah right nice to meet you like hi you didn't know I existed so that's All been right. fun. Like, hey, I really thought I was going to get a C, and I they never turned anything in. So <laughs> People amaze okay. me. They really so, do. Yeah, always right. always creative. A creative, crazy journey. So Let's jump in. Let's try and get creative with some of these questions. Oh, First boy. one is, do you think you would survive a horror movie, and you have to explain and justify your answer? I would say no, because... I'm going to be that classic person who, even though they've played sports all their lives, they're really into sports. I would be the guy who trips, falling away from the chainsaw guy, and I'm on the ground. Uh, you know, <laughs> like that would just be me. Like, oh yeah, I, I can run a marathon, but uh, I'm going to trip and fall right in front of the chainsaw guy. I don't think I would make it. I don't. I just don't. <laughs> what? What number? And I'm thinking of like a cast of a few characters, like. Would you be the first to go or like the second to last? Like, where are you in the lineup? I'd say like the classic group of four or five. I'm probably like third in line. Like okay. Somewhere. That's not terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm going to trip and fall, but I, I'm probably going to survive a little bit just based on just adrenaline, I guess. Uh huh. <laughs> That's I so. Dig it. But no, nah, like. I'm... I don't know. I've been thinking about this a lot, actually, because I had a, a girl come on my podcast, which is a local sports podcast, and her family uh, travels the country and they make horror movies for a living. Ooh. Oh. Uh, I, I, I was going to sit down and watch one here in like the next week uh, or so because, you know, this is a, a, a person that I cover, high school soccer player, and mm-hmm. I kind of want to see them in this role and like how they do. Uh, be pretty interesting to see so that's awesome i dig it that's so cool yeah so the the movie i want to watch is called the deeper you dig and uh if you youtube it the trailer is pretty freaking spooky so <laughs> i love i love the spooky if you can yeah. tell by the way i was dressed <laughs> so <laughs> that's you know that's kind of be, been me thinking about uh horror movies recently I like it. I've been extra spooky lately because me once again plugging something that does not need advertisement from a tiny podcast with an audience of approximately three people in a shoelace. I've been listening to this spooky podcast called The Magnus Archives and oh my god, I've gotten through like a hundred and something episodes in like less than a week. It's so good. Wow. Anyway. (laughs) I think my answer depends on what kind of horror movie we're talking about here. Like, are we talking, like, is this a slasher? Is this, like, a zombie apocalypse type deal? Mm. Because as much as I am, like, extremely klutzy and probably would have, like, no plan, I think just sheer anxiety might keep me going for a little while because I just really don't want to die. Although in a long-term situation, like, any kind of zombie apocalypse thing, I'm definitely screwed. Um... Because, you know, the chronic anxiety, that's that's probably gonna gonna worsen in any kind of apocalyptic situation and eventually be my downfall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, wow. I mean, I agree with you there. I, I feel like it depends, like, on the type of villain. Like, who is chasing me or, like, after me? That, that comes into play. Um... I do perform well under pressure, so I feel like that the ball's in my court. In That's that respect, I'd like to think that I would get one or two solid swings in, just like out of a survival instinct. Please continue. Yeah. No. Um. So yeah, I I do do well when it's like you know a high pressure situation for the most part. But then again, I feel like at one point I, I would the adrenaline will get the best of me. I'm like, you know what? I've been running for days. Like, just take me. Like, (laughs) I give up. Bridget, I would be interested to hear what, as you mentioned, what type of horror movie you're in. Like, what what is your go-to 
kind of genre of w- within the horror movie kind of industry? I mean, I don't know. Like, anything, like, kind of indie, I guess. Like, things like, you know, like, the paranormal activities where they're just pumping them out with a bunch of, like, jump scares and, like, they aren't really, like, taking the time to, like, unsettle you on a really deep level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, I love, like, Hereditary, Midsommar, like, all that, like, really, really messed up freaky psychological shit. <laughs> So I don't honestly know if I would survive that. Like, like Midsummer, that's a cult. I'm probably screwed. Uh, hereditary, like, demons and curses. So they're, like, you know, I don't, like, no one really has a shot. It's just mess, it's just toying with you and making you think you can survive for a second. But I don't know. Maybe, like, a, sl- like a slasher. I don't really, I don't watch a ton of those, but I like to think I could, I could get maybe one or two good, good hits in. I feel like the uh, the psychological ones would really, like, I wouldn't last long there because... I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, like, I feel like so, I'm going to get outsmarted so fast. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'd like to think, like, ooh, I will play the system. Like, no, no, one, no one's getting up here, but really, I'm going to last, yep. like, 20 minutes into the movie. <laughs> I think, I, think I, I might... Oh, you go, go first. I might get, like... You know, I might figure out, like, one... I, I'll i do the thing where, like, that gives them the key to beat the villain in the end, but I have to sacrifice myself to do it. Because, mm. like, my, I don't know. The fact that I'm already psychologically messed up, <laughs> maybe that'll give me, like, a tiny bit of insight, and then my, my death can pass that on to, like, the rest of the kind of, like, core group, and they can use the knowledge gained by my sacrifice to defeat the antagonist in the end. Bridget, I feel like we're two opposite ends of the spectrum. Like, just knowing myself, I feel like I'd be, if this was a movie, I'd probably be some sort of, like, idiot comic relief character. And I'm, I'm the bait. Like, I'm the first, I'm the test monkey. Like, all right, get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I won't lie. Enough. Sometimes I kind just of have feel, that feeling, though. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Like, there's a lot of other intelligent people that are going to survive after they see how I get taken out. So. <laughs> Ooh, take notes. All right, I'm not going like that. Yeah, I'm not going like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, maybe at least I can provide some useful information in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got anything else to say about horror movies, or do we want to move on? I think I'm good, yeah. Fair enough. Maddie? I think we've exhausted this one. Love to hear it. Love to see it. Okay. So, would you rather have the ability to see 10 years into your own personal future or one year into the future of, like, the world at large? Okay. I feel like this would have been helpful last year. Like, 2019. I would have been like, I wonder what 2020 is like. Like, let let me take a peek. Oh, I don't like what I see. Never mind. (laughs) Yeah, uh, let me move to New Zealand real quick. Yeah. No, but I would choose the one year in advance because I don't really want to know what I'd be doing in 10 years. Hopefully it's something good. Yeah, um, I feel like that's a kind of spoilers situation. Like, I'd rather have, like, I'd rather be able to know what's going on globally and, like, kind of make a couple plans based around that. But I can see the benefits of seeing 10 years into your own future. Woo, okay. Whoa, what's going on here? Couldn't tell you. Are you in a <laughs> horror movie? <laughs> I, I just like I think either someone else is trying to call me. I have no idea. Huh. There Welcome we go. Back. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> One time we talked about ghosts and then our yeah. stream crashed, so that was the ghost trying to enter the podcast again. <laughs> He's back. Yeah, he needs a na- they need a name. <laughs> I don't know who else would be trying to Zoom call me right now, but I don't know. It's a horror film. I mean, psychological, <laughs> right? So, I'm messing with you. You are not wrong. I would say for me, I would also pick the one year in advance. I, I feel like what if I looked 10 years into my own future and I didn't like what I saw? How would that affect me today when I come back? Yeah, true. I'm also, I'm also a big, like... Uh, I wish I could go back in time. I think it would be yeah. so cool to not even just personally, just be able to see 
events. Uh, and I don't even mean like the moon landing or anything. I mean, yes, that would all be really cool. But even just like events locally or in my family or something like that, I just think it would be really neat to see uh, kind of your own world today, like how it was a hundred years ago. Like what was my town like? What was my school like? All, all those type of things. Like, I, I don't know why that stuff really fascinates me more than looking ahead. Mm. See, I agree in like a much stupider way. <laughs> Because, like, you know, there's a, they're always, like, finding evidence that, like, humans as a species have been this weird for quite some time. Like, you know, they opened up, like, a some like 16th century French mansion, and they found a taxidermy of, like, two frogs sword fighting. And, like, there's, like, an ancient Roman or Greek mosaic that's, like, a skeleton, and it says, enjoy your life on it. Ooh. So, like, I would just want to go back and, like... Look at old memes. <laughs> well, it's, like, I want to go get turned with, like, some 16th century, like, Italian nobles. Because you yep. know they were just as weird as we are now. They just didn't have... They didn't have the capability to document every single second of it. Right. Like, I just want to see, like, people getting lit and being weird and having a fun time. So, would you to rather go just in general go into the past or go into the future it sounds like the past yeah probably the past i think definitely the past for me just because like i'm just so fascinated with what it was really like like that argument today that just like we have everything we could ever want right at our fingertips like what was it really like when you didn't have that it's kind yeah. of interesting. and i'm not saying like oh i'd want to go experience that forever but it would be interesting to see like hey i don't have electricity i don't have a car i don't have running water like yeah what was that really like so <laughs> i think um a question that is posed today is that like oh we know so much more today like technology is advanced and science but then again you have to think in the past like how much lost information is there uh yeah. people people think like oh the future that's where our knowledge can only grow and whatnot but, save the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, that'll be my mission if I go into the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with you guys. I'd want to go into the past as well. I mean, when you think about it, like all the stuff that they don't know how they built some of the pyramids and some ancient civilizations and some of those things, like how did they lift these heavy rocks up here and how did they build these irrigation systems and all that, like I think that would be really really interesting like you said like what information did we have that mm -hmm. like somehow got lost in time and like how did it get lost in time that stuff to me is like you can just scratch your head all day on that so <laughs> that and also just getting absolutely lit <laughs> right at like at like a bar in like the 1920s or something yeah roaring 20s baby let's go and like how much more did they drink and party back then? Like, they didn't have all these other distractions, or were they just having right wine and beer? Party every, animals. Every, every There's second. this Twitter account I follow. It's like yesterday's press or something, and it's just all these like little newspaper like clipping bits from various times in the past, and some of them are so funny. They're like literally, some of them read like a Twitter timeline just in like old English. Mm. it's absolutely hilarious like one of them was like recently i saw it on like halloween or something it was and it was like something that had been published during like the flu epidemic in the 20s and it was like the only way to enjoy halloween this year is to put on a mask and a bathrobe in your own house and pop some popcorn before going to bed and i'm just like oh my god Relatable. i'm literally living this right now that's my life yeah wow like this is what i'm doing right now hey, this is me on a tuesday and like they're li and they're these like these little newspaper comics that are essentially memes about like people not wearing masks. I'm like, oh my god, history is cyclical. Oh yeah, I I think going back would just be so neat, and almost in a weird like Back to the Future way. Like, wouldn't it be weird to see your parents or your family members like as a young person? Like, would I want to hang out with that person? Would I not like that person? Like, what would that be like? Oh, my mom would have hated me. <laughs> she had a roommate in college who was, like, a big nerd, Star Wars, all that t 
type stuff, and, like, that's kind of, like, what I am. She was like, yeah, I mean, she was Imagine fine. Going... We never got along all that much. Imagine going back in time because your sole purpose is to meet your parents and they end up bullying you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I would have gotten bullied. I would have gotten wow. bullied, period. Yeah, like, like for a how's guy. This, how's this different from present day, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're a guy and you meet your dad and he's like, look at this chump, you know, or whatever, like, I, I just, yeah, it'd be so weird. So weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I can, I can almost get, like, my mom and I would not have been, would not have been friends at all. <laughs> None of that. Good question, though. I like that one. I try. I just scour the internet for <laughs> random-ass things. It's a fun time. Oh, here's a hard left. And guess what? It's a food question! Whoa. Bridget and I love food we struggle. questions. We to not have like entire episodes be just food questions because you can wrong get with that. so because de- you can get so divisive but no one's really getting hurt mm. like, i've been re- offended a few really times fight about it. i mean i have too so <laughs> you ain't special <laughs> but here we go uh what's the proper level of toastiness mm. like when you toast your bread to what degree are we toasting here? Chard. That's <laughs> disgusting. I'm kidding. Um, mm, I. It depends on my mood. And really? Like, and how hungry I am. Like I have I am. a set, like, number. Really? It never changes. Like, it depends mostly on my hunger level. Like... Like, all right, do I really want to wait for this toast anymore? All right, <laughs> come, come out, you're done. I mean, it varies based on, like, bread type sometimes. Like, if mm. I'm, like, ma- taking, like, the really, like, thick slices of the, like, brioche to make a nice sandwich, like, you got to put those in for a little longer to get, like, an even an even level of toastiness. But, com- like, compare that to just, like, a piece of, like, white bread that I'm putting, like, my, my peanut butter on. It's the same level, you just have to do different things to achieve it. Mine, like, yeah, it never varies. Mine, I guess my final answer is, like, tannish? Like, not, like, all right, so it, it's definitely, like, toast on the outside, but when you cut it in half, like, it's still soft on, in the middle. Yeah, that's generally where I fall. Like, you want the crispiness to go, like, a little inside. Mm-hmm but then still have it be bread. Like, you don't want to be able to snap it in half. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm a strict, not charred, but over toaster. I mm. like crispy. I like a little, uh, I like a little burnt edges. Bad. Real, real no, brown. not bad. Because I think- Y'all are burning your toast? There's nothing worse than, like, you go over to someone's house, and they're like, yeah, I'll make toast, and you're trying to be nice, and they give you this soggy, <laughs> gross, like... Just warm bread. Yeah, I'm like, you know, well, I don't mind... How's your toaster getting your bread soggy? Yeah, uh, it just... Like, I need some real... I need some real char on there. I, I like oh, that. Y'all are out here burning your toast on purpose? Yeah. Oh, for Disco sure. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. If I just wanted, like, soft bread, I would just pull it out of the bag and eat it, right? Or, or whatever. Yeah, but if you're making a sandwich that involves, like, a club sandwich that involves toasting, if you have it, like, really charred, it, like, cuts up the roof of your mouth a little bit. I True. like Not a challenge. <laughs> I just, you I think it's... You terrify me, Maddie. That's what you gotta do. It's you, Your mouth's gonna take a little pain, I guess. Yeah. For... <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't wanna, I don't want to be in pain while I'm enjoying my nice BLT. <laughs> no, but like even if you, okay, let's say you do keep it in a little too long, you could just scrape off the top a little if the Okay, black... yeah. Like we had like the toaster at my house in Geneseo was like, you know, some cheap, like the cheapest one not like the cheapest one, but like some cheap one that we found on like Amazon or whatever. Right. It gave you a pretty uneven toast, so I was very familiar with the little, doing the little scrape. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there's nothing worse than when your toaster is crappy and like one side is completely black and the other is not even like done. You're like, <laughs> I know. What's going on here? 
that's why I love a good, we kind of, we, we've touched on this briefly. I love a good pop-up toaster because you know you're getting something mm. on both sides. Very true. You don't, true. Even though you can do more with like a toaster oven, there's less risk of like one side charred, the other side nothing. I also feel like for whatever reason, I'm glad you guys said toaster oven because I feel like some people don't even know what that is anymore. They're like, toaster. It's the best. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I love like it's I the live best on. toaster technology there is. Mm -hmm. Even though, yeah, a very nice one. even though sometimes it is, I guess, uneven. Like I like, I'm very like aesthetic. Like I like to it see the lines. It is aesthetically inferior to a pop-up toaster. I like to see the lines on my toast. So there I will, I will draw my hard line there. Like my family growing up, we didn't have a microwave and we just used the toaster oven. People thought I like lived in the stone age. <laughs> Her family is anti-microwave. <laughs> well, I, wait, I don't know if your family was anti-microwave, but that we talked about this, like, I think last podcast, like, my mom does not like microwaves, so that's why yeah. we never we never had one. So I I know my way around a toaster oven because that's all we had. Yeah, all we had. <laughs> I don't think my family was against it, but they were just like, why do we need one? We can do this with the toaster oven or anything else. Mm -hmm. so, I guess it was funny. I, I guess I was a pretty little kid. My mom told me this story that I was pretty little still. And I went over to someone's house, you know, like one of your first sleepovers and you know, we had something out of the microwave and I must have said something and uh, one of the mom or the dad there was like, well, you guys don't have a microwave? Like, how do you eat? And I like made some comment like, well, my family actually cooks. <laughs> like, <laughs> oops, Ooh, like, nice. I don't know if that was very polite, but at five or six. Very or, like, nice. You don't know. I, so. I mean, you're not wrong though. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't say microwaving is cooking. Like, right. You're, you're heating, yeah. mate, you're microwaving. And I, looking back, I'm like, I don't know if toaster oven is really like hardcore cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm like, I don't know. What if you set it to the bake setting? Like, then it's is true. it cooking? That's true. I think we do sometimes like cook things in our kind of like conventional oven. Like if it's just like me, like if my dad's out like golfing or whatever, and it's just me and my mom, and we're going to like, you know, roast the asparagus with a little olive oil and salt yeah. and pepper you just put it in the in the toaster oven on the little pan instead of heating up the whole ass actual oven very so true put the other thing in the oven and have them both done at the same time very true i think it's my favorite for reheating pizza yes like it comes out get, different yeah it, it comes does. out yeah so. i will say though i feel i feel like we are dunking on the microwave a lot though hmm. it it has its it has its place yeah, as like, I mentioned before, I'm I'm hungry. I don't want to wait for my toast, so I feel like a microwave would be very handy to me, and I would not have. Well, no, I went toast in the microwave. Yeah, but, but like, like I, I, I don't have to wait for my food. That's what I'm saying. That's the thing. Like when you stumble back from a party at 3 a.m. and all you care about is food now, <laughs> quality does not matter. The microwave is yep. there for you. I mean, when you come home again at 3 a.m. And you want some uh, Easy Mac? Are you gonna get? Are you gonna get the pan out and everything and make it on the stove, or are you gonna put it in the microwave? Right? The microwave. Or you can just do yeah. what I do and eat like a handful of shredded cheese straight out of the bag. <laughs> yep. That's like the silk of existence, and like I've told this to like people of like my mom's generation before, and they just don't seem to get that like coming back to your shitty college apartment drunk off your ass at 3 a.m. and just eating shredded cheese out of the bag is like an almost universal experience yeah it's so good especially if it's like the the like mexican blend for <laughs> cheese the best i'll be impressed if you like how much gets in your mouth and how much in the morning on the, floor. Like on the floor you know all over the counter <laughs> You're like stepping on cheese. Who put yeah. this cheese here? Yeah. Oh, I remember person. what happened. <laughs> like even when I'm, I am significantly under the influence. I will try to leave my room, like when I go to bed, and like the house and the room. I will try to leave it as clean as I possibly can, as like a favor to my morning self. But like with the cheese out of the bag, you could be stone cold sober, and you still are like, how did this? What happened? This got this all. This is true. 
This huh. is very true. That is the uh, only drawback of eating shredded cheese straight out of the bag. Yeah, totally worth it, though. Absolutely. 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10, frankly. Yeah. Let's see. I feel like the next one might also be another... Oh, this is tangentially food-related. It involves food. And this one, I guess, is more directed to the two of you because these glasses, for me, are... They're, they're BS. Whoa, it's it's for show. Oh, no. Okay. Not <laughs> entirely. I don't need any kind of, like, corrective lenses, but I do so much video computer staring at screen work that I started getting migraines, which I had all, like, that was already a problem that would, like, happen sometimes, but it just started right. getting worse, so I got the blue light glasses, and I, now I just don't take them off. But yeah, I'm technically a fraud, a little. <laughs> but they are Fake very, news. very helpful, and, you know, they make my head not hurt all the time. Right. We'll let you slide. But I say that because this question involves contact lenses, which I've never worn. And the question is, would you rather spill hot coffee on yourself while doing 65 on the highway or get something excruciatingly irritating in your contact lens while doing 65 on the highway? <laughs> okay, I will say both at once have happened to me. <laughs> because oh, all right before before i start i am also wearing the same blue light glasses as bridget but Twinsies, we love but, it. Uh, I, ooh, i'm not a fraud ooh, these are my actual glasses and i never wear them because i it, well if you're listening you won't see this but they are so thick with Thick with two C's that I don't wear them in public. Thick with I, like five C's. <laughs> I know. Like, I cannot see anything. But wow. beside, besides the point, anyway, going back to your question, um, yeah, once I was driving and something got in my contact lens, I'm like, all right, let me like look and see if I can get it mm -hmm, out. Around in my eyeball. And I was also drinking coffee and then I spilled the coffee. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> so it's kind of impressive. I'm not gonna I, lie. I feel like the pain in my eye and now, like on my leg, it almost like canceled each other out. So I'm like, oh wait, I'm just in pain everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> so well, cute. We love it. But if I had to choose one, yeah. I'd say um, pain in my. <sighs> Pain in my contact, I guess, because I don't know how bad the burn will be. And for the most part, I am pretty good at just taking the contacts out of my eye if it's really bad. But then I don't know if I'm driving, then I won't be able to see. <laughs> you know, I my take the risk and still do the contacts. I don't even wear contacts. And I'm going to say contacts because if you like burn yourself, like that's going to be a much bigger distraction than like having to just kind of be like me. For those who don't wear contacts, I feel like it, it's similar to if you get an eyelash in your eye, like where you're like closing your eye and you're in pain. Okay, yeah, then like that's a thing I can just kind of like, you know, one hand on the wheel, but also just be like doing my little get out of my eye type situation. Mm -hmm. I feel like burning myself would be a much bigger distraction from the road. Well, I have two... Unless you're about to disagree. I would love to hear your counterpoints. <laughs> well, I have two interesting parts to this. Do tell. Number, number one is I don't wear contacts. I only wear my glasses. Fair enough. Okay. And I'll explain that in a minute. And number two is I don't drink coffee. <gasps> Do you drink oh, I don't either. I drink tea, but, yeah. you know, hot liquid. I don't necessarily... I don't usually drink hot liquid. Like, I like tea... But I would I don't like make a tea and take it with me in the car. What about like hot chocolate? Yeah. R very rare oh. occasion. Like I just Okay, but let's say you like you get you treat yourself, you get you get yourself a hot beverage from Starbucks yeah. after uh, you know, long day heading home, you're like, you know what, I deserve this. And that spills. <sighs> That's tough because I recently was mowing lawn and I got something in my eye and I ended up scratching my eye and it just it killed for like three or four days and I was just constantly like doing the whole poke yourself in the eye mm -hmm. rubbing it like I had to get cream to put in there I mean it was absurd so now I'm like I'm kind of leaning towards the the burn <laughs> but that's fair 
It's probably Maybe because filming... I have in so long that I've forgotten what that how bad that really is. So I, I wish when they were filming that scene in A Clockwork Orange, they actually like the actor actually got like his eye scratched and was like temporarily oh. blind in that eye for a couple days. Yeah, it's it's not fun. Dedication to the craft, my dude. That's true. <laughs> I um, I could wear contacts now, but I don't. Um, I have astigmatism, so like one eye is good, one eye is bad. Mm-hmm, and true. when I first started wearing contacts, it just didn't work very well. And they've come a long way since then in, in contact lenses. But I've actually gotten to the point where I don't wear my glasses for a lot of things. And I've just kind of gotten used to it. And mm-hmm. um, last time I got an eye checkup they actually said they thought my bad eye was improving and they thought maybe that was because it yeah. like is Where working you? out all the time so <laughs> that, is, that is something that can happen though like if Wait, the is more, it really yes the more you wear your glasses the more dependent you become on them yeah. so like if you don't wear them as frequently your eyes do slightly improve it's not to say you'd have 20 20 vision if yeah, you take off very, your glass yeah very tiny bit and they said for me like and I've noticed this over the course of my life. Like my good eye is my dominant eye, and will do a lot of the work. Mm-hmm. And just finding that that other eye was almost like lazy, lazy <laughs> eye. So I didn't consciously like try to start doing that. I was just like, well, I don't want to wear my glasses today because I'm doing X, Y, Z, and I could smash them or whatever. And then I just kind of got used to it. So. That's probably not the greatest idea, but but <laughs> it is easier than messing with contacts. So. Mm-hmm. I'm now rethinking the amount of time <laughs> that I dedicated to hounding a certain other Geneseo professor who shall remain unnamed because he doesn't like to be on the internet for not wearing his glasses all the time, even though he was like technically like almost blind <laughs> in one eye. <laughs> I mean... You'd always have to lean into the computer, I'm like... He was just improving his vision. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would not... I didn't know that at the time, and I was like, why are you doing this to yourself? I wouldn't do it. Like, if I'm sitting at the computer, I'm reading, like, I, I like to have my glasses on. For me, it was more like, if I'm outside doing yard work, or... Yeah, that's r- one thing, but, like, he working would... Out, yeah. Just straight up almost never wear them, and then be, like, leaning down to his laptop. I'm like, why are yeah, you I don't think I would do this to yourself, buddy? Yeah. I wonder if he'll ever watch this episode. Um, you know who you are if you are watching this. <laughs> um, but going back to your question, I mm-hmm. feel like, uh, and I've given this more thought, I'm still with the whole, I, I think I'd rather get something in my eye. Um, mm-hmm. Because I'm thinking, like, what if I spill something? Like, am I wearing pants or shorts? That's a big question. Like, do I have... This is true. Am I, if it's sweatpants, and like, honestly... Sure, like, whoosh, but if I'm wearing nothing, like just shorts, I don't know if I want to yeah, go no, down that I'm not, road. I'm really not there for that. Mm, good point. I've actually Very never good point. had to wear contacts, but I feel like I am not going to get away with that for much longer because I really like, um, big nerd, really like cosplay <laughs> and <laughs> conventions and stuff. And there are some that I am, some that I plan to do that I'm definitely not going to be able to pull off unless I can get past the fear of wearing contacts. So, it'll have to happen someday. And then maybe I'll have the experience of getting something in my contact and I'll know what it feels like. Oh, and you could come back and tell us about it. Like, how was it for you? So fun. (laughs) I really struggled, and I don't know if I would be any better at it now, learning how to put them in. I really struggled with that. It... Oh. Uh, so I've been a contact where, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Since like <laughs> fourth grade for sports, because they would always gotcha. like fall off my face. So I started young, uh, mm-hmm. and I had to go to like not a class, but like they'd like work with me one on one, putting them in my eye. <laughs> I had to go twice because I'm like, how do you? I could get them in, but I couldn't get them out. Yeah, I'm not so scared of the getting them in. I'm scared of the getting them out. All right, this is... I couldn't get it out, so I'm just like, all right, this is a part of me now. This is my life now. (laughs) But, like, yeah, there's so many... Like, so many costumes I want to build where I'm definitely not going to be able to get away with it if I'm not wearing contacts. Right. Or at least not the level of accuracy that, like, I personally, like, find enjoyment in getting things that accurate. 
like just for myself and I know I know I can't do it if I don't if I don't like you know make my eyes bright green like they're supposed to be <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's a really good point so i'll probably have to learn at some point but then i can come back and we can i'll we can teach revisit you this. Oh, yeah, thanks, te- Mom. i'll hold a lesson we can all learn <laughs> i could get them out i had trouble getting them in oh I, never, I could never tell oh just it looks like a bowl or whatever i'm like oh it yeah looks sometimes like one two way. three like they have yeah. the numbers on them i'm like it looks the same to me i don't uh-huh. know so yeah i, I could use Very a lesson interesting <laughs> Yeah, I actually, like, I know that, like, you know, like, people who actually, like, needed glasses, especially, like, you know, kind of hearing, like, anecdotes from people who wore them when they were younger, they're like, yeah, I hated having glasses, and, like, I hated having to wear them. I kind of like it. Like, I'm, and maybe it's because I'm not doing it out of any, like, I don't need them to see. They're just really helpful in that they, like, you know, kind of solve a rather major problem of, like, working on screens all day. So, I kind of like them. I would say it sounds like maybe Maddie and I had a similar experience of like we had to get them when you were little and when you're little there's that whole like you don't want to get them because then you're different and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that whole thing but then as you get older especially now where they actually have like cool looking frames yeah you're like oh cool I like this so Mm -hmm. now I love it but back then I was horrified to get glasses i know i'd always take them off for pictures but now i look forward to like oh i get new frames this time like, yeah exactly i love that <laughs> a little bit change of perspective yeah i remember i, I cried when i had to get them oh, i was like oof. devastated but hey i only i only had i never had braces just had glasses i think i had, oh i had braces oh I you lucked out gear yeah oh I I oh no but i didn't have to wear i didn't i only had to wear it at night but it, it was there. I had, mm. like, a whole wire thing. Ooh. Because apparently, nice. like, there just straight up was not enough room in my mouth for the <sighs> teeth to come down. So they had to, like, it was essentially, like, pulling them back. My sister had that. It was rough. Mm. <laughs> I had to sleep with that for, like, I think at least a year. God. Yeah. No, I, I got lucky there. No, no braces. <laughs> Full set. <laughs> but I did get them done relatively early, so like by the time that like some of my friends were just starting to have them put on, I was in the clear. Which was very nice. That's huge. Okay. Taking another hard left turn. Should you arrange books on a bookshelf alphabetically by title or alphabetically by author? And then, if you arrange by author, should you sort the section alphabetically or chronologically? All right. If I were to own a bookshelf, because I don't, and my books are, like, in hidden corners of my room, (laughs) but I feel like I would arrange them by author because I I feel like I'd want them all together, especially if it's a series series. Because, you know, I don't want to be looking all around. And then by author, I'd arrange them chronologically. Like, if it's in a series, then sure. Maybe if I don't have any series together, then alphabetically. But I feel like for me, rearranging mostly comes to, like, book heights. Like, all right, what makes the most sense? Like, like up the slope, down the slope. I have two very large bookshelves because I have a ridiculous amount of books. And also, I worked in a library when I was in high school. So my method is alphabetically by author last name. And then if it's a series, like chronologically, but like say like, you know, they publish like, you know, the first two books of the series and then like, you know, a collection of short stories and then the third book in the series came out. I'm not going to have that interrupting the series, you know? So that I'm going to have chronological, but mm-hmm. if it's a person with just a bunch of kind of like unrelated books, then I will have it um, alphabetical. Did you ever steal any books from the library? No. <laughs> I stole a book from my high school. I didn't think about that. <laughs> the books that 
got from the library were from the bin of free books that they were going to get rid of otherwise. The book I stole from my high school <laughs> was because one of my favorite teachers was retiring, and she never asked for the books back at the end of the year, so I just kept it. Mm. Well, hopefully they don't come looking for <laughs> Her whole, like, yeah. personal classroom library, and everyone was having her, like, sign the books she was giving away for us. Wow. One was a legend. Well, that's good. You got a little piece of history then. That I do. I would say I, I would have to agree with Maddie um, on the organization. I've never really thought about it, but what I've currently done is just like, oh, that book looks good there, and then the height, and I kind of... But... This now that you mentioned the series thing, and I only have a couple of series in my small book collection, but I would want them all together mm-hmm. in order. I wouldn't want them all, all over the place. But a lot of my books right now, even the ones I'm looking at, are like just kind of tossed in there based on color and height, and like, oh, that looks kind of nice. But at some point, I probably should actually get them organized. You know, there's there's some rather serious rhyme and reason to my to my bookshelf organization. I feel like that comes from your experience working in a library. Like you probably put more thought into it. Like I didn't think of. And I'm also in- just like that. Let's be real. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. The library, like, it was already there in just the way that I am. But that really drilled it in. <laughs> I loved that job. Oh my god, I miss it. I miss it so much. I would show up for two hours at, like, three days a week after school, and I would do almost nothing, because it was a really small town library, literally a block from my house, and they would have me, like, shelve books that had been returned, pull ones that, like, other libraries had requested that, like, in the system that, you know, weren't at a different branch, So I'd pull those books that they would send, and, like, you know, I would just organize stuff there, and then every single day I would, like, go up to the librarian and be like, hey, like, are there any projects, like, you need me to work on or whatever? And he'd be like, nope. So I'd just sit there on my phone, and, like, the whole time I would, like, have my headphones in while I was doing my job, and nobody would talk to me. It was really great. I miss it so much. That's, like, an ideal job. No one talks to me. Heaven for a high school senior. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, miss that job every day. That was pretty ideal, actually. And I could just go in my backyard and be there in 15 seconds. I've always thought with the library at Geneseo, like you walk in the main doors and you look to the right and like the checkout desk is there and there's always like seven people sitting back there and I'm always like, what are they doing? Like, <laughs> there's like, I want that job. Like, that's, that's mm-hmm. got to be the best job on campus. Like, you're sitting there, maybe doing one person. Doing your homework. Yeah, like, doing your homework. Maybe one person asks you a question, and you probably shuffle them off to someone who actually knows the answer, and that's yeah, about so it. Yeah, that or, like, IDS. Or, like, yes. the, not IDS, the, like, the tech help Like, desk. CIT. CIT, yeah. that's what I meant. They just, they do nothing. <laughs> Like, people just come I out feel- and they're like, can I rent a tripod? And you're like, yeah, give me your ID. And they're like, okay. Transaction over. That's yeah, that's that's the gig right there. I feel like CIT does more than, uh, like, the other side of the library, where it's just, like, the reference library, yeah. I guess. Like, I would only go there to get uh, whiteboard markers. That 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 was all they were to me. The whiteboard mar- marker the people. The whiteboard marker's place. I like that. That's fun. Oh, um, Rip Milne. I know. Yeah, they're all out of jobs. Rip well, no. Milne. Now they're what in Sturges still. I have absolutely no idea. I just know that building is full of asbestos. Oh yeah, didn't they like split it up between Sturgis and Fraser? Is Fra- Fraser open? Because last time I was in Geneseo, it was closed. I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I mean, everything was closed the last time I was in Geneseo. True. <laughs> Fraser's like this weird building that you only use as like a cut through to yeah, get some more was it. That was it. Like that was all I ever thought of that building as. I think and I actually did. 
one class in there. Yeah, like I ended up having two classes in there ever, but it was just such a weird, quiet, like I would just use it, especially in the winter, because it was like, okay, that's the fastest place I can get inside. The entire building usually. has yeah. like you know, liminal space energy, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, just that, I like like that weird space you only exist in to, like, get from point A to point B. Very weird yeah. energy. I liked when they took all the tables and everything out of Frasier, so, like, the library part, so it was just, like, this huge room. And then they locked the room so you couldn't even get in there. Like, what is, yeah, what was what is that? this big room doing here? I, like, really? just chilling. No one's using it. You want to hear a funny story? Yes. Um, you know that Always. glass room next to the Fraser Library? Yes. Yeah. The doorknob came off once when I was in there, and I was stuck for an hour and a half. And no, there is not a person in sight. I was. <laughs> I have videos from this too. Banging <laughs> on the door, like, all that right. That is so funny. But is I, that the room that they like turned into the? No, I think of something else. Like, I close the door, and I on the inside, there's no doorknob, so I'm, like, ready to leave my, for, um, like, I was done studying, and I'm like, oh, there's no doorknob. And I was, oh, I guess, uh, too shy to, like, call someone for help, like, the police. I'm like, no, I, I can figure this out. And honestly, that thinking process is why I die first in the, in the uh, horror movie. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to inconvenience anybody. Maddie, I wasn't sure. So, you, so you are a Geneseo person. I am. Yes. Yeah, I graduated with Bridget last year. This podcast Excellent. has been like exclusively populated by Geneseo people thus far, and I'm afraid that people are going to start thinking it's like a Geneseo exclusive. I'm gonna be like, people outside New York are gonna be like, "What is Geneseo? What What is that place?" <laughs> right. For those who don't know, it's a college in upstate West, Western New York, um, near Rochester. Pretty sweet place. I miss it. It's a good time. I don't know if you guys miss it, but, <laughs> but I, I do. I uh, listen. I'm yeah, living at home right fun. now. It was it was more ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, compared to my current situation, very much more ideal. But thus is life. Let's see what else we got yeah. for today. That's it. Wow. So we can move into some kind of just I have a random pool of questions that I haven't assigned to any particular episodes yet so we can do a couple of those if we're feeling it I think we've been running for a little under an hour how do we feel about another question or two sure yeah throw a couple of randos in there thick we love to hear it okay I gotta find a fun one though I did have a cheese thought I could run past you guys oh, do let's, tell let's hear it. <laughs> So the big thing in Oneonta is after you go out to the bar, you go get pizza just like you would at Mia's or wherever in Geneseo or whatever the pizza places are called now. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a slice, and then on top of it, they will put cold mozzarella on it, and they just call it cold cheese pizza, and it uh, will, like, blow your mind. So they Wait, get so is this, like, it is, a, like, a slice of pizza – from a yep. pizza that has been fully cooked, mm -hmm. and then before they hand it to you, they just take, like, mozzarella cheese out of the refrigerator and... Yeah, like, they'll just literally... That kind of sounds like it slaps. I've had it's... that, and I am a fan. It is yeah. good. It's really good. Lie. So they, like, just you order a slice, they put it in, they put it on a plate, just looks like a normal slice of pizza. Then, at least where I go, the guy just has his little bin of cheese where he's making regular pizza anyways... Sprinkles it on top, hands it to you, and then your mind explodes. So I love that, and I can guarantee you the reason I've never heard of it, even though my dad went to Oneonta, is because the man does not like pizza. <gasps> oh! The, yeah, Oneonta is a great pizza town. Alright, listen. I'm from Long Island, so... <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing. Uh-huh. I swear, Oneonta has good pizza because... All the Long Island people come up here to Stonianta, as they call it, <laughs> and they have brought the good pizza with them. So I feel like we're in this like sweet spot of like you're upstate, but you have downstate pizza. Okay, I dig it. That's that's like I can 
I can't say that upstate pizza is like downstate pizza because it's not, but I just feel like we've had enough people come up here that we get to be in that sweet spot mm-hmm. where otherwise you're like eating gas station pizza. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Hate to see it, hate to hear it. Do we have any other cheese thoughts before we dive into No, I just, that popped into my head, so. I love it. I guess I, I have one other random question. Yeah, why, do tell. Why do so many Long Island people end up in Geneseo? You know, I've I've wondered that as well. I <laughs> I don't know because it's not like Geneseo was well known on Long Island. Like before I was applying to colleges, I did not know where <laughs> Geneseo is. Oh, and like I did not know any upstate like areas like upstate for us is like if you're past westchester you're upstate like it's all upstate it's all the same i didn't know where anything was so i don't know why so many geneseo (laughs) people that's i feel like it's just always been that way like when i couldn't tell you and even now even now in class when i'm like give me a little intro on yourself like 70% 70% of the class will be from Long Island. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's either there or Buffalo, I feel like, everyone. And Buffalo makes sense, because, all right, that's, like, not too far away. Like, what right. was it, two hours? I don't even know. From Geneseo? Yeah. yeah. Hour, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, Long Island is, like, the furthest, or one of the furthest places from Geneseo. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um... Does everyone here play Pokemon? I played Pokemon Go for like five minutes when that was a thing. <laughs> okay, so then this one this one is not relevant. I will pick another one. Uh, yeah, my uh, Pokemon experience is limited. Yeah. Oh, that was my that was a big chunk of my childhood. Oh, here's one. Um, which side of an index card is the front? Ooh. Hmm. I, it depends on the purpose, I feel like. Because here's the thing. <laughs> My mind automatically says, oh, it's the side with the lines. But if you're using them for, like, flashcard purposes, like, you know, for, like, voca- like what I would do with, like, vocabulary in Spanish when I was in, like, grade school, where do you put the big word that you're testing yourself on? The blank the side. Blank side. Mm-hmm. And, like, when I would make those big sets of flashcards for my Spanish class, that's what I would think of as the front, was where, like, the big word that I was studying was. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I feel like, like, I had the same thought process as you. I feel like until you write on it or do anything with it, like, a naked flashcard, the front is where the lines are. But then it changes if you start to make, like, real flashcards. Why does this make so much sense? <laughs> I totally. You're, like, you're completely right. Yeah, I 100% agree. Like, Why do we my, think of it like that? My mind automatically was where the lines are, but then, listen to this one, where I work now, we use index cards, and we put them in a typewriter, and nice. type on the card, and it's always on the side without the lines. Why is that? So, well, and huh. also, if you use them for like a storyboard or whatever, you draw your frame on the blank side, and then you put mm. your little notes and stuff on the line side. Yeah, I don't know. Why? Never there actually. This reminds me of when we had Brooks on, and we like realized the amount of like calculations that you subconsciously do when picking like a mac and cheese vessel and utensil. That's, you that sounds that? pretty intense. Well, yeah, we're I do about, remember like, that. Yeah. How do you like? How do you eat mac, mac and cheese? And cheese? Like, what do you use? And we were all like realizing, like, wait, whenever I like have mac and cheese on a plate, I always go for a fork because of X, Y, and Z. And we were like, oh my god, you're right. And I'm just like, I'm realizing yeah, this is that's a similar deep. situation <laughs> with this, right? I did like we did not expect that to Mm-mm. expect that to emerge from that question. I'm I'm sticking with what we're all thinking. Like it it depends, but I think if at least for me, I'm thinking like if it, you're not 
if you have not written on this index card yet, then the front is the line side. You're right, because that's the side that's up when you buy a pack of index cards. <gasps> wow. <laughs> oh my god. That's true. Wow. But when but when you buy a pack, like I don't I can't think of the last time I saw a pack in the plastic. Like I have is it, one. Is it always the lines up or could it I don't know. I'm I don't pretty know. sure it's almost always the lines up. I think it is. Wait, I might I might have an unopened one here. She's just carrying those around in case she in case she needs some. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I mean, it's Hold always on, good to have a little, little notepad, a little sticky on. note, a little something. True, true. Yeah, like I said, we use them for work, and the guys, the station that I work at, everyone is so old, they actually still use a typewriter, and they put them That's in the typewriter. And I'm... so aesthetic, I love it. And that probably, and that's probably <laughs> the worst thing when you're actually trying to work. Oh. When you want to be all cool and mysterious and look at me on my typewriter looking all aesthetic... Yeah. Oh my god. Yep. She's got it. Apparently these are open, so I can't tell if there is a label here, but I don't know. Just like analyzing them and looking at the lines. Got some I, I feel like I, I'm tempted to say the lines up, that's the front. I mean, so I agree that, that, completely with your analysis. Thank you. Is that be, entirely that begs the question? Are we using them wrong? Or have we been using them wrong? Or was? Who invented the index card? We need to ask them. <laughs> yeah, right. Can Google tell me? Some if guy any... who was... Yeah, some guy some with guy... too much time on his hands. He was drinking too much in 1920 with Bridget, <laughs> and they just came up with this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God, if anyone so knows, nice. leave a comment below. Like, we need to find out who created the Why is it that when you type in who invented, the first one is who invented the light bulb, the second is who invented blow up dolls? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's my Ooh, line. That's, of, for, I need to know first who made the know. light bulb, and then that's my next question. <laughs> yeah. Who invented it's logical. cards? Oh, there's actually an answer. Carl mm. Linnaeus. And here's the summary from Science Daily, which is the first result that pops up on Google. And that's the most in-depth research that I'm willing to do right now. <laughs> Carl Linnaeus is most famous as the father of modern taxonomy. What's not so well known is that his, in his effort to manage vast amounts of data, he came up with a revolutionary invention, the index card. So it was like a quick way to get things like cataloged prior to computers and stuff. Hmm. That's actually kind of interesting. I like assumed it was one of those things that like kind of just came into being without someone inventing it. Right. That's kind. Of, that's like kind of really cool though. Huh. I will I will link that information in the description. Wonder if he anyone. actually like I wonder if he just like actually came up with the idea of like the material or is he was he just using smaller pieces of paper? Like that I'll have to look that up. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's I don't interesting. Know. And I will put a link to him in the description for anyone who is who wants to check that out. I did not expect to find out such a cool fact. Learn something every day. All right. I think we're coming up on about an hour and 15 here, so I'm going to say we call it for tonight. My mind has been blown Solid. by the index card, so I don't think any more thought processes are happening up here. <laughs> love to see it. Love to hear it. All right. Uh, we are available to stream on um, Anchor, Spotify, Overcast, Radio Public, all those fun um podcast streaming sites you can watch the podcast on youtube we are all available to follow on twitter at bridget kelly 98 at mr5 mar and what's your at handle nate Lull. at nate, at nate Lull. Lull. <laughs> and all the handles and stuff will also be in the description so um that's been our that's been our podcast for tonight very nice what am i saying 
<laughs> what am I saying? It's been good. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you. See you next week. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.